powerful up-to-date piece of law tackling online copyright and the future of digital Britain, or a draconian restriction of rights which could spell the end to free Wi-Fi. The worry is that as the government cracks down on illegal file sharing, there are those who aren't responsible that might get blamed. If you have a wireless network without a password on it, anyone can log on and use your internet through your connection. Wi-Fi cafes, hotels and even local councils provide these hotspots to allow people to get online. Now the provider of the service is responsible for any activity on their network and the Act explicitly states that the law applies if A subscriber to an internet access service has allowed another person to use the service and that other person has infringed the owner's copyright by means of the service. So it seems pretty clear that businesses allowing their customers to use the internet will be in trouble if users download illegally. But in July this year, Ofcom produced their Initial Obligations Code, secondary legislation to the Act, and it's basically just an extension of the law. And in this code, they say a subscriber is... A person who receives the service under an agreement between the person and the provider. And... Where a Wi-Fi network is provided in conjunction with other goods and services to a customer, such as a coffee shop or a hotel, our presumption is that the provider is within the definition of Internet Service Provider. But under the Act, internet service providers need to keep detailed logs of who uses their service for what and when. Does this mean coffee shops will have to ask you for ID before letting you log on? No. Ofcom's proposal would initially exclude those operators, since the number of subscribers would not meet the required threshold. But this leaves small businesses in limbo. If they're not big enough to be internet service providers, but are still called them by Ofcom, it's not clear whether they can be charged for their users illegally downloading files. This confusion has frustrated a number of groups who oppose the act. I'm going to London to find out more and to meet them. It was here on the 7th of April when the government had the third and final reading of the Digital Economy Act during the wash-up period of the previous parliament, a time when unfinished business is dealt with swiftly. But there are some who think the act should have had more time being discussed as the Digital Economy Bill before it was given royal assent and made into law. I'm going to meet the Pirate Party, a political group who condemned the passing of the Digital Economy Act. For a typical example, let's say a cafe, they may well make an internet connection available via a Wi-Fi wi access point for their customers to use. But in, this is the 21st century. They're also going to want to use that internet connection, which means that they will be treated as a subscriber by the initial obligation, by the obligations code, and uh, will thus be liable for anything which their customers do on the internet connection. At the moment, I can't actually see any way or any clear steps that can be taken in order to operate an open wireless access point. So, as we know it, yes, I think it could be the end of, uh, wireless, of uh, open access wireless. The end of public Wi-Fi seems like a fairly serious consequence of the Act. But if this is because of illegal downloads on open networks, how easy is that to do? And how does anyone know if you've done it? I've stopped at an internet cafe to get online and see exactly what sort of activity the Act is trying to prevent and just how cafes like this are vulnerable to users like me. Now, I could be downloading anything, but because I'm on this cafe's network, it looks like they're the ones using the internet. This video has been downloaded over an internet connection with an address. Now, every internet connection in the world has got an address which is theirs and theirs alone. But with so many more people online, it's hard to make sure that every address is unique. The system is sort of like a global address book and it's called an Internet Protocol Address or IP address and looks a little bit like this. Your IP address changes every few days and you're given a new one by your internet service provider, the company you pay to get online. These companies like BT, Sky or Virgin Media will keep a track of every IP address you've ever had. So if someone comes to them saying that we've stolen music or film from them, they can check your old IP address against that of the thieves to see if you stole it. This means this cafe could be accused of illegally downloading the movie you've just seen. The Open Rights Group are just one of a number of organisations who aren't happy about that kind of false accusation. I went to meet one of their campaigners. Well, people are concerned because they realise, um, you know, it's not just, um, you know, the evil uh, fire sharers or pirates, as some people call them. 
uh, who are affected, but it's everyone. You get the letter from your ISP saying um, it was alleged that you infringed copyright. It could be anyone visiting, any guest or, or relatives or you know anyone, or it's a family and the kids doing something upstairs. I mean, if you ask um, mothers and fathers what their kids do on the internet, most of them I would say, well, I have no idea. Uh, and why should they, you know? Are you supposed to spy on them? I mean, internet has become a, a normal part of a lot of people's life. Um, and that is why a lot of people are uh, rightly angry about it. It won't go away. Um, I mean, there'll definitely be um, a law. If it's that harsh a law, um, remains to be seen. Um, it's, it's too early to tell, really. And I think um, owners of Wi-Fi cafes uh, should be worried, yes, definitely. I'm off to meet Phil, an assistant manager of a Wi-Fi cafe. Basically, a coffee's uh, worth more to them if they can also be doing work at the same time. It would be at a uh, severe disadvantage if we didn't have internet where other businesses around us do. Um, and obviously we can't be responsible for what people do and don't look at on the internet. I asked Phil about taking down the details of everyone who uses their network, a possible requirement if Ofcom decide that the cafe is an internet service provider. It's completely impractical. Uh, a cafe like us definitely couldn't do that. We'd have to stop providing the internet, definitely. We don't, we don't have the time or the resources to take down people's details. If we were to be punished financially for someone accessing an illegal site from our Wi-Fi, then we would definitely have to stop doing it uh, because yeah, we wouldn't be able to afford to carry on. It seems that a secondary service like Wi-Fi with coffee will be lost if cafes are held responsible for their users' actions. And that seems like a shame. But what is it we're trying to protect here? I'm going to meet Liz Bales, who works for the Industry Trust, a body set up to raise copyright awareness. I think there's a perception that because something is online, it should be free. and Many um, youngsters today, they're, they're digitally born, they take the view that content um, is free, whether that's news, that's music or that's film. But the idea that everything is available at no price is actually quite short term. Because if you apply it to, for example, film, your average film will cost £30 million. About 1 in 30 films, roughly 1 in 30, will recover their costs at the box office. About 1 in 10 films will recover all of their costs and make a profit across the life cycle of the film. So that's through the, the box office, through cinema, through DVD and Blu-ray and download up onto TV. Every time someone is accessing content for free, they are reducing the total pot of money that goes back into reinvesting for future films. So some of that content that is accessed for free will actually represent lost sales. And people access content really because they love it, because it is socially, culturally relevant to them. Everyone has got their favourite film moment, everyone has got a passion about some sort of film. And that diversity of film we have in the UK, if everyone is consuming it for free online, you will lose that and the production sector will shrink enormously. File sharing has always been about the few affecting the many, but the effect on the many in this case could be the death of free Wi-Fi or the loss of the UK's creative industries. Now, in January next year, Ofcom's initial obligation code will come into force, and it's then we'll see the full effect of the Digital Economy Act on internet cafes. Hello, can I get an Americano and a lawsuit, please?